It's road trip time and I'm about to jump in a car with New Zealand comedian who's been living here in Los Angeles, Greta Lee Jackson, and we are going to go on a magical murdery tour. That's a hashtag that could get you in trouble. The plan? To head on up the California coast and check out a couple of murder sites. Road <laughs> trip! Could there not be a more perfect way to delve into the mind of a murder nerd? Murder nerd is a term I came up with to sort of describe someone that's obsessed with true crime. It's an obsession. The same feeling people get when they see stars, celebrities and things like that. I get when I see famous prosecutors or um, the criminals themselves. Like it's a rush. It's like, wow, that's actually them. You know, it's dangerous. It's risky. It's... Um, alluring in a weird way you know you don't want to glorify what they do but you can't deny it's like whoa that's Casey Anthony like whoa that's Jodie Arias she looked right at me like whoa it's a rush it's like that's my Hollywood I think everybody has a little bit in them they say they don't but you know everybody has a little bit of that like oh what happened what's the drama what's the gossip you know and that you know with crime that applies to it I've always sort of liked the dark side of humanity I've had an interest in it because it's so outside the realm of my own experience. Like, I, I want to know why. Who is your favorite murderer? You don't like them as a person. You like the case and the, and the circumstances and the outcomes and the twists and turns and the drama and the secrets. That's what you like, you don't like them. Some friends will introduce me like, oh, this is Greta, she's the true crime girl. That's her thing. So it's almost become part of my identity now, in a way especially now like performing uh, comedy about crime. I mean, that's a niche that I feel like I hold uniquely and I'm able to do it because I know enough about it to make it palatable. Welcome back. Uh, it's time for rule number two, or else. So this is giving your lover the valuable lesson that if they choose the option escape, they're going to wind up with a future far worse than spending the rest of their lives with you. It's funny because people will try and make you feel weird for it. It's not. It's basically psychology. If you you don't you don't go and tell a, a morgue technician or a criminologist or a psychologist or a forensic pathologist that they're weird. Don't kill me. So why is it that if you're just interested in it, you get the stigma of being a weirdo? Every professional in the industry is not. So I only shot him in the shoulder. I've done a guest spot on a true crime show um, as an expert. Coming up, police are called to a bizarre crime scene. They discover the bodies and they're both shot in the face. It's pretty hard to go incognito on a crime scene with pink hair. I love it. I don't ever see myself stopping. So is this how you do like a reconnaissance kind of mission? Yeah, I try and keep it pretty guerrilla and, and film from cars and film on iPhones and so no one really knows what you're doing because obviously people get quite offended when you're sort of making light of a crime scene. Oh, they're filming too. <laughs> oh my God, it's a thing. Look, the look she's got the sheds. neighbor has got the sheds. They're doing it too. They're slowing down and, and checking out the house and driving past and getting it still this many years later. It's over 10 years ago and there's people are still slowing down. This is still a tourist attraction. It's not just me. Some people collect stamps. I collect photographs of myself outside famous crime scenes. I've got Elliot Rogers' site, the Alpha Phi house at USBC. I've got um, Casey Anthony's house. Catherine Knight's house in Aberdeen. I'm in front of Seth Gonzalez's house in Epping. Well, the Gap, Gordon Wood. And I have Travis Alexander's house where Jodie Arias killed him. Over the years of looking at all these cases and looking at the behaviours and the conditions and the outcomes and the motivations and things like that, you inevitably, this is going to sound weird, but it actually makes you appreciate life a hell of a lot more and realise what you have and, and be thankful for what you have and be grateful for your own sanity, you know. Although I would have people argue that I'm, you know, not sane. But from studying crimes and stuff like that, you get, you end up getting heightened compassion because you've seen what a murderous act, a criminal act can do to a family, to another person. To, you've seen 
how deprived it can get. Therefore, you know, your compassion's heightened. You understand it. You have a full perspective. Of, you know, you can understand the spectrum of actions and, and, and their outcomes and things like that. So, you know, I, I, I would agree that it teaches you lessons about humanity, your own humanity and your own uh, relationships and things like that because you see the full extent of human dysfunction when you look at crime. And so, you know, what not to do? <laughs> and unfortunately, with the human condition, something else will come along, undoubtedly.